worship music plays, where are you, Lord? Let them get your spirit, the mind, the spirit, just to have a good old time with that. Come on, can we cry out together? Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. to share what God has placed in my heart, to not just encourage each other, but also bring each, us together in this time of unity. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 a.m., I'll be coming to you and just giving you just a small bit of what God has given to me, and I'm praying and hoping that it blesses you and it touches you um, the same way God has definitely blessed and touched me as well. So let us go ahead for 
a moment of silence, a moment of reflection, a moment of prayer, just to repair our hearts and our minds. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for another day. We thank you for letting us see towards the end of the week, Father. We made it to Friday. So I ask right now in the name of Jesus, Father, that you continue, that you open our hearts, you open our ears, and open our minds to receive what you have for us on this morning, Father. You know what we need more than we know ourselves. So touch us in a mighty way. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, beloved. So this morning, I wanted to share with you just a snippet of what I want to talk about, which was brokenness. Um, I was talking to a fellow colleague, and, you know, we were talking about how she's trying to finish her program. She's trying to do her schooling, and, you know, it's just hard. And we understand. We've all been there. When you're trying to establish a task, you're trying to figure something there. It's hard, especially when you feel like you've been broken or you feel like you've been through some type of task or some type of series that has maybe brought you down or has it came out the way you expected it to do um and i was just encouraging her on the phone you know and we were laughing and we were just having that that commodity to say you know hey i've been there and i promise you if i made it through amen that you sure made it through as well amen so i want to say good morning to Jose Cortez Ortiz, good morning, good morning, welcome, welcome. So this morning I want to talk about brokenness. And brokenness, of course, I like to break it down for what brokenness means. Because so many people say, you know, I feel broken or I've been broken or that this is broken. And you're like, well, what, you know, does that mean? So when you break down the word brokenness, it means a forcibly separated in two or more pieces, fractured, to be fractured so a broken arm or a broken glass that is what brokenness means so when you hear the word brokenness then what comes to mind you know again some people say you know broken or you hear brokenness what can come to mind so when someone says i broke my arm that usually means that the purpose that their arm served is not able to be fulfilled the difficulty of not having your arm work in its full function hinders you in your daily activity we've all been there or you might not but you might have known someone who has broken a limb or broken an arm so getting dressed or driving a car or just saying just be able to try to tie your shoes became an obstacle amen welcome mrs lamar welcome welcome the difficulty of not having your arm work in its full function it hinders your daily activity you can't get dressed you can't drive a car you just can't even tie your shoes might have become what an obstacle wherefore that when you've broken this arm you either have to become clever and creative in how to manage especially if you live on your own or you have to find someone to help you amen excuse me however we know that even though you break your arm it can and will be restored over time amen your arm just needs what time to heal you go to the doctors, you broke the arm, they give you the cast, and they usually tell you, what, like a month or so. Take your time, and it'll take time to heal. The body needs time for the new muscle and the tissue to grow. So this morning, beloved, I'm wondering, have you ever been spiritually broken? Mm. Have you ever felt mentally and emotionally and physically drained? Come on, let's just keep it real this morning. Is that all right? It's all right, because I promise, you know, this is a safe space. But I can admit to myself that I've been there. I myself have been there. I've had those moments of just being, you know, just over it. I calm, I short, like life, I'm done, I'm over it. It is just one thing after another, and I am tired, amen? My boss might have been getting on my nerves. My kid's not listening. And there's always a bill due here or there. Even in the midst of this chaos, our bills are still due, amen? So, I'm coming to you talking about brokenness, beloved. Brokenness is real. It's a thing that some of us either have seen, heard, or been through. So what do you do when you are broken? Mm. How does healing come? I'm glad that you asked that, beloved, because brokenness comes in order to provide room for growth. I promise I'm going somewhere, so stay with me. We as a nation seem to be going through a moment of brokenness. We are facing things that folks have never seen before. 
We all knew that there were things going on in this nation that might not have been pleasing to God. The violence, you know, the corruptness, come on, let's keep it real, the secrets, betrayal, you name it, folks were getting out of hand and taking for granted what they had so they could do whatever they wanted to do. And it doesn't seem it was right or it's wrong. So now God has stopped everything, everything. We have been shut down. We have been postponed. Everything has been shut down. So then that brings me to the scripture. If you look at Psalms 147, chapter 3, I'm going to be reading Psalms 147, chapter 3. And I'm going to be coming from the NRV, NRSV version, my, um, excuse me, the NRSV version, Psalms 147, chapter 3. It says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Mm. Let me read that again. He, now of course we're talking about God, amen. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. God could not heal our land until it was broken. Mm. Why, you ask? Because brokenness, again, as I said before, brings growth. My God, listen, beloved, we all have been through something. If y'all can agree with me, say amen. That's all right. We've all been through something, something that we thought was going to take us out or something that couldn't even get us out of bed. But God, we survived. Amen. But God, we made it through and it came out a new person. We didn't come out the same way. We didn't come out saying, woe is me. We didn't come out still feeling sad or depressed. No, we came out a new person. Why? Because we survived that thing. Whatever it was that brought us down, whatever it was that we went through, we came out, what? A new person. We gained some insight of something that we thought we would never make it through. However, we did. So now we have a new personality. Now we have a new wisdom. We have new insight. We have some knowledge from the brokenness that helped us grow into who we are today. Amen. I'm going to say that again. When you went through that thing, when you've been through that thing that tried to take you out, that put you down so heavily, that you thought there was no way out, you thought you couldn't figure it out, or you thought this was the end, God said, no, not today, my child, not today, my daughter, not today, my son. No, today is not the end. You will, and this too shall pass. And somehow you made it out. It might have been last year. It might have been two years ago. It might have been six months ago. I don't know when it was, but it was something that you went through that God has brought you out and you survived it. And as you being a product of the survival, you came out a new person. You came out like, pfft. I could do this now. I got it now. I've been through this. I got it. So when now people come to you with their concerns or people are stressed out, you say you have a word for them. Hey, listen, I've been there. I can help you. You can make it because I am the product of going through the same thing you're going through. That's what God has definitely been saying to us, beloved. A nation, as a nation, we are broken, but we're not broken separately. We are broken together. You and I are going through the brokenness together in this season. We are all shut down together in the house. We are all postponed from some of our jobs together. Our kids are out of school together. Countries are going through the same thing together. No one is above or beneath, but we are what? Together. So as us all being broken together, imagine the knowledge and the insight that we are going to gain from God as we are going through this today. What are you saying, Elder? That I'm glad you asked. We as a nation, again, are being broken in order to make room for the growth. God is getting things in order for those of us that believe in him and those of us that keep the faith. I've always been saying this since Monday and I said it on Wednesday. We have to keep the faith. We have to become believers of Christ or we have to just become believers of God. What else do we have to lose? Amen. If you can't go to work and you can't even go to church right now, you can't go see your loved ones, unfortunately, especially your elderly loved ones, your grandmother or your, your grandfather, your aunt or your uncles. This is the time that we have to come together and increase our faith and increase our belief in you. I can give you a story that I am a hospice chaplain myself, and I'm not able to see my patients. So I call the caregivers and their families every day, and I'm checking on them, and I'm helping them say, you know, I'm I'm so sorry for this, and I wish I could help you, but I can pray. Let's pray. Or do you need a scripture, you know? And then our nurses and our CNAs, they're going out there each and every day. They still have to go see them. They still got to check on them. 
So I had a, a family member the other day, a son, and he was saying, you know, I was so used to seeing my mother every day and I would bring her food, you know, from our country and I, I really wish I could see her. Now, our business finally got into the using the Zoom. Um, I don't know if some of you guys might know what that is, but it's like a video chat. So I said, you know what, let me talk to the nurse and let me see if we can figure something out that maybe when she's with your mom, we can video or we could call. And he said, you know what, that would be great. So I went and coordinated with my nurse. And yesterday, I want to say since maybe he hasn't seen her in about two weeks. So yesterday was the first time that he was able to see his mom on the camera just like me and you are talking right now excuse me and his face just lit up and she just lit up and I mean she's not able to say a lot of things but she still was able to you know smile and she was waving and the little things that we have taken for granted beloved God is still making a way even though he can't see his mother and even though he couldn't physically be there me and my nurse and my agency, we figured out, okay, how can we still bring these people together and still be able to show them like, hey, I'm okay. I'm doing all right. I know you can't physically be here, but I can check in on you. Amen. That's what God is trying to do on us. He's trying to check in on us. That's what God is trying to build in us. He's trying to say, unify, be creative, figure out ways. Your arm might feel like it's broken, as I talked about in the beginning, but it's going to take time to heal. The beautiness of something being broken, it does get healed, amen? But we just don't know what, how much time that looks like. So while we're trying to find the time, figure out how to unify, figure out how to help each other, amen? God is getting us in order for those of us that believe in him and keep the faith. In this time, we need to be praying more. Again, I said this on my Monday and my Tuesday video, we have to be praying more. And I'm not just saying, you know, Praying, saying, God, I need you. Or I'm not saying, pray, God, I want this. No, but we need to start changing our praying language. You're saying, God, show me who I am to you. God, show me what type of woman you want me to be. Or show me what type of man I need to become, Father. God, show me what was I not doing that I need to be doing in this season. Taking those prayers deeper. Taking that relationship deeper with God. Fasting not just from food, but from those things that are still distracting you from God. We have to be able to not just put the plate aside, but maybe put the Netflix aside, amen, or maybe put the cell phones aside, amen, because we still have things that can keep us busy. We still have things that can come into our spiritual realm and distract us. But God is saying, did you put time aside for me? We all know if you're teleworking, you got to be on the call at this time. You know, you got to be all ready and look all together at this time. Have you done that also for God? Have you set aside a time and say, okay, God, I'm going to pray or meditate you on this time, or I'm going to read your word at this time, or I'm going to maybe do go join a Bible study. People are having Bible study virtually at churches on Facebook. You know, I'm going to take that time and really put your, my effort and my spirituality into you. Those are what I'm talking about, fasting, taking that time to set aside and really put towards God and really focus on God in this time that we have no control over nothing. When I say we have no control over nothing, meaning not just ourselves, but I'm saying out there, whatever's going out there in the world, we have no control over. Every morning, I know about you, I wake up and I'm just like, I don't know what to expect for today. I might turn on the news. I don't know what I'm going to see. I might look on my Facebook or my Instagram. I don't know what's going to be popping up on my news screen. I don't know what happened on those hours I was asleep. And I'm just bracing myself because I, at this time, I don't know what could happen, right? But I also know where my spirit lies. I know where my relationship lies, and I know that lies in God. In this time, we have no control over nothing but for what we do in ourselves. You, beloved, have control over who you are and whose you are and what you want to do with God in this time. This is the time to not keep putting those things off, but this is the time to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to do what God was telling me to do for years, or I'm going to do what God was telling me two months ago to do that I kept saying I didn't have time for. This is the time to get in close relationship with God as well as unify together. Our nation needs healing. I don't know about you, but I feel like we've been needed healing from all the violence and all the the gun violence and the young people dying, you know, left and right, or the sickness in our land, or 
or the, the chaos within the political realm. There was so much negativity, so much going on. We need healing in our land. And for me, beloved, the only person that can bring healing to a nation is God. If you don't believe me, go back to the scriptures. God has always been involved in every type of war or in every type of destruction, but he did it because he brought healing in some type of way. When those who were faithful and had a relationship with him, believed him, he spared them and kept them aside as he had to do what he needed to do to heal the land. He never gave us the secret on what he was doing. He never said, you know what, you're going to go over here like when Noah had to build his ark. He didn't say, no, you're going to build the ark. I'm going to flood this long. Then I'm going to go ahead and, you know, build this up. And then you're going to have this house. He didn't give him every detail. He just said, I need you to be obedient and trust me to just build the ark. And as you build the ark, I'm going to give you your next instruction. That's what God is trying to do to us now in this season, beloved. I need you just to go seek after me first. I need you to maybe do the forgiveness you need to do. I need you to maybe go figure out how to go deeper and in a relationship with me. And then eventually I will give you the next steps to go. But first I need you to show me that you can just follow me. And you can just seek me and be okay with not knowing what's next. But have a humbleness or kind of like a peace on the inside to know, you know, I'm connected to God. Our nation needs healing. Our nation needs a newness that speaks life. You know, we need life of unity. We need life of peace. We need life of justice in our land. We need life of humility. A true love for God is what I feel that God is challenge challenging and charging us to do right now in this season, to have love. Therefore, I wanted to encourage you on this morning, beloved. If anything else I said you might not understood or anything else might have not touched you, I just wanted to encourage you on this morning that you don't have to fear, that you don't have to have anxiety or doubt about what's going on. I know it's natural for us as humans to fear the unknown. I know it's natural. I have myself sometimes and saying, okay, God, are you sure? Or, you know, God, I don't really see you or... I don't really feel you, but it's natural to have those feelings. And what I always tell people is that it's okay to have that feeling, but make sure you don't stay stuck there. Make sure you might go through that emotion or that moment, but don't stay stuck there. You got to be able to overcome that type of feeling of anxiety and overcome that fear and say, okay, God, I doubted you for a second. Or you can say, okay, God, I'm human. You know, I just really wish I had some answers, but I still love you. I still trust in you, God. I still believe in you. I still have faith in you. That's the type of relationship I'm talking about. That's the type of God that I serve and I know that you serve that will be able to hold you down in the midst of the brokenness. But we have to dig deeper into our faith in God. This is the time, beloved. If it's never a time before, dig deeper into your faith in God. It's like you got to do some real work, beloved. And I, again, I'm not just speaking to you, but I'm also speaking to myself. It's time for us to get some work in. You know, God is challenging us to say, mm, what do you do now? You know, this is something different. This is something you're not used to. This is something you weren't born into. This is something that you've never seen before. You know, what are you going to do now? How are you going to be stretched? How are you going to be pulled? How are you going to be pruned? You know, we're going through the harvest. What What is the reaping and the plowing and all those feelings and all those emotions that is going on? God's saying, dig deeper into me. Dig deeper into the faith of who I am. Know that I am God. Know that I sit on the throne. Know that I love you. Know that I am there for you. Know that the grace and mercy of me is still there each and every day. So dig deeper into your faith. Find ways to hold on to God's unchanging hand. If you don't know what else to do, try to seek God's face first. I promise you, he will not doubt you. And if you can't do that, look to your brother or your sister a mother or, or a friend, look to someone to help hold you up or look to someone to help encourage you. This is not the season to be by ourselves. This is not the season to be isolated. Even though we're isolated in our homes does not mean we cannot unify or connect to one another. It's 2020. There's so much technology. There's so much things going on in the world. We can unify together. So if you feel, beloved, that you can't get out of bed or you feel that brokenness or you feel that heaviness, look to God from prayer, but also look to a sister 
or a brother in Christ to pull you up or to keep you sane. You know, look to someone to say, you know, I got you. Because the powerful tool that we can share to one another, even though we can't touch one another, is prayer. We can pray for one another. I'm telling you, there were many times that I was down and out. And I promise you, before I became a chaplain or before I became a pastor, I was out there having my fun, you know, doing what I wanted to do, especially when I went to college. I was grown, amen? You know, I thought I knew what I was doing. And I promise you, it had to be my mother and my father's prayers that got me out of that situation. I don't even know how I made it out of some things, but because of God, I made it out. And I know it wasn't just on my own. I know my parents were praying for me. I know they were seeking after God for me probably when I didn't even think I needed it or deserved it. They were still going through that motion. So that's how I'm saying we can help each other, beloved. We can pray for one another. We can also seek after God for one another. The problem sometimes is that we go through things and we don't want to be vulnerable. We don't want to tell everybody our business or we don't want to be judged. Trust me, I get that, amen, because some people don't know how to just keep their mouth shut, praise the Lord. Or some people just don't know how to just be humiliative or be there. But you don't have to share everything. If you could just say, hey, you know what, today's not a good day for me, can you pray for me? You can send a text or you can send a message. You can DM me or you can email me, whoever you need to, and just say, just pray. You don't have to be so specific in detail. God already knows your heart. He knows what's going on on the inside. He knows what you're going through. All you got to do if you need to, reach out for someone else to agree with you in prayer that you can make it out of this thing. Try to encourage your fellow sisters and your brothers that healing is coming to our land. I promise you, beloved, healing is coming to our nation. It's just going to take time. The same way that the analogy of when you break an arm and you get the cast, it takes time to heal. But eventually the tissues and the muscles, they come back together and they heal. And then you're able to do whatever you need to do with your arm. That's the same way what God is doing in our land. Even though we are broken in the midst of this chaos, in the midst of of the virus and the midst of things going on, he's still taking time to put things back in order or put things in place for us to heal and to be a better nation. After we go through this, imagine how much wisdom and insight we're going to have that we didn't have before. Imagine how much unified we are going to be than we actually were before. Imagine how it don't matter who you are or what religion you are, everyone believes in God, and we are all praying together on one accord. That is growth. That is growth that is coming to our nation. And when someone can't be strong, then you need to be strong for them, beloved. Remember that. You are not the only one who might be afraid. You're not the only one who might be scared. You're not the only one who is going through this. We're all going through together. So let's try to find a way to what? unify together find a way to come together and be able to help each other as we are going through the brokenness amen beloved amen i hope that word encouraged you on this morning it was just a snippet of talking about how we've all been or we've all known someone who's been broken before but they survived amen so we as a nation as we are broken maybe now we shall and we will survive. Amen. I don't know about you, but I believe there's power in the tongue. You know, there's power within our words that we say. So sometimes we just have to claim the victory even now when we can't see it and give God praise because we know victory is coming. And we also know that there is better coming and greater is coming. That is the faith that I'm talking about that we have to dig deeper on the inside and find and believe that God will make a way out of no way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. At this time, beloved, if you have any prayer requests or anything that you'd like to put um, in the comments, you can do that now. I know I have some prayer requests from some of my friends that I'll be praying for. But there's anything this morning, it might be you who might have feeling broken or you, you might be going through just a time that you feel heavy or a time that you have that anxiety or a time that you have that fear. It's all right. Let us pray with you on this morning. Let us all agree as we're all chiming in to, to build each other up, to unify each other. Let us try to be the strength that you need right now in that moment and this season that you can't give, but we can help to give to you. Amen. If there's anyone who might need that, to me, anything, I don't want my angels to 
hearts and minds are clear. We're going to go ahead before the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Father. I thank you for breathing breath in our lungs. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. So we ask right now in the name of Jesus, I ask, Father, that those who were able to stream live, those who were able to watch this, that you cover them, Father, from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, Father. I'm asking for that oil to flow. From the inside out, like number four, give them healing in their bodies, their minds, and their spirit, Father. Those who might feel that brokenness, those who might feel that heaviness, those who might be battling the anxiety and the fear. I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you give them healing, Father. You stretch your hands to them as they're in their bedrooms, as they're in their living rooms, in their cars, wherever they might be, even maybe on their jobs, Father. Stretch your hand of your anointing, Father. Let your, your glory be able to flow. Let them feel your anointing right now in the name of Jesus, Father. We're asking that you send healing to them, Father. Even when they might not feel strong, Father, help us to be able to be strong for them. I pray, Father, that you be able to give them peace in their mind that passes all understanding. Father, help them to see who they are in you. Help them to have the visions and the dreams of the men and women of God that you have called them to be since they were in their mother's womb. We are praying, Father, for our nation as a whole, Father. Even though there's chaos in the land, we know we serve a God that is able. We know we serve a God that can do great things. We know that healing is coming. We know that justice is coming. We know that peace is coming. So we ask right now in the name of Jesus, unify us together like never before. Bring us together on one accord. Help us to touch one another in a mighty way, Father, through our prayers and through our talks, Father. Help each church as they continue to minister, Father, to the multitude, Father. We ask that you help the children as the parents are trying to teach them as they're in the homes and the teachers are working hard trying to upload the videos and the lesson plans. We pray for the health care teams, the nurses and the doctors and the CNAs and the aides and even the front desk workers, those who are still going out each and every day, Father, putting their lives at stake but trying to help a life at the same time. We ask that you be with them right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Help us to have a great unifiedness on this morning. Whatever it was that was on our heart, whatever it was that we came with, Father, help us to not leave the same but feel some lightness because we laid it at the altar in front of you, Father. Bless us not just on this morning, but bless us on this weekend, Father. Help us continue to stay focused, to continue to fast on your word, continue to feed on you, and continue to help one another in this time of need. We thank you again for the victory that is coming. We know that greater is coming. We know that growth is coming. And we know that peace is coming. So we give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. I thank you again for joining me on this morning. I thank you for those who chimed in again. I pray that the word and the, the, the snippet that I shared with you this morning touched you in some way. I pray that you be encouraged, beloved, on this morning, that that brokenness is not going to stay, but healing is going to be coming, and that whatever you survived before, you shall survive this too. Amen. I pray that you have a great and wonderful amazing weekend be creative and figure out how we can you know do things with our kids or do things with our family if we can't be there physically virtually talk to each other or call someone on the phone and encourage one another amen i pray father that you'll join me again on monday i'll be back doing this on monday wednesday and friday of next week 7 a.m um usually as you see this 30 minutes is usually not the full hour and we just interact together any questions or comments you might have, please feel free to DM me or email me. Um, anything you want to share or any uh, suggestions you might have or topics you want to talk about, I'm definitely open to hearing that. So go ahead and share those with me. Also, if you have friends who don't have Facebook um, but you want to share the video, I'm also uploading this to my YouTube channel as well, which is still under my same name here on Facebook, Elder Paula Davidson. So you can also share that way on the, my YouTube channel. That way we can just help encourage our sisters and our brothers again through this tough time and stay what unified together. Amen. God bless you, my sisters and my brothers. God bless you joining. And I continue praying for you as well as continue praying for me. Amen. Because we need prayer together in order to stay unified. Thank you again. Have a great, wonderful weekend. Amen.